car advice is at this year's 2016 Los Angeles Motor Show, checking out some wacky concepts, a whole bunch of cool production cars, and cars that we should get but don't. So let's sit down with the team and see which cars were hits and which were misses from this year's LA Motor Show. Guys, it's been a massive, massive two days, and I think everyone wants to know our hits and misses. It's something we do at uh, each motor show we go to. Elvors, run us through what your hits and misses are. Well, look, I think um, surprisingly there were more hits here than misses. So I, I think for me, really, I can't go past the Jaguar I Pace. I think that was a good looking car. That was a really good looking car. Um, I love the F Pace, and I think that's just an extension of that. Um, but also. Um, but you're not biased because you don't own an F Pace. I do own an F Pace, oh, and I sorry, love my car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but also the the Stelvio, which I don't like the name. I don't know why I don't like the name. Mate, it's an iconic road. Yeah, it's a driver's car. But it's it's an Alpha. But it's an SUV. You know, like what would you call an SUV Stelvio? Like I don't I don't get it. Um, it's a bucket list drive. Yeah, I know, I know, but not in an SUV. You probably wouldn't take that car up to Stelvio yeah. Pass. But anyway, um, that's that's a that's definitely a hit for me. Um, I also have to give an honorary mention to the CX5, um, mainly because I really think they've really evolved their design and mm -hmm. I think the Japanese are so bad at usually doing that and Mazda just seems to be the odd one out they just seem to get their design right and also because Mazda's paying your ticket mate I'm here with <laughs> Mazda but you know in all seriousness though yeah. it is a good looking car it is a great looking car oh, um, <laughs> yeah <clears throat> I agree with that uh, <laughs> CX-5 the front end looks so futuristic it's almost like conceptual yeah. for me I was looking at it closely yesterday I really really like it and the interior of course is a real big change for Mazda. I think it's, uh, uh, again, an evolution of their interior. Mm. It gets better every time, you know. And Tony, what about you? What are your, <coughs> what's your hit from the show? Look, he's, he's stolen my thunder as usual, so I've got to go <laughs> with uh, I-Pace because uh, I'll be swapping my Disco Sport in two years yeah. for an I-Pace. So he's lining up a discount um, already. <laughs> <laughs> but it is um, not only for its groundbreaking styling, which they've modelled off the original CX-75 concept car yep. which was launched in London in 2011 uh, and they never went ahead with that car because um, it was remember it was going to use turbines yes. and they, they weren't quite ready yes, for that technology yeah. um, so the front end is very much CX-75 it How looks fantastic does it make? Is it, is 294 it proper... kilowatts that is, that is 700 newton meters now that wow. that torque figure uh, is rated the same as the F-Type SVR. Wow! So this is some some really uh, wow. some and really powerful driving stuff. Driving range will it actually go far? Yeah, that they're quoting 500 kilometres, and they're saying that's wow. conservative. It basically gets a thousand charge cycles from zero to 100 percent. But of course, no one charges like that. They charge from around 90 yeah. to 20. Sorry. Yeah, I. I, I don't think they're going to do that, oh, man. I, I, I don't think it's it's a it's you know Tesla's been doing it for a long well, time. For, for some background, Elbors does have a Model X on order, so again, there's some bias coming out of that <laughs> I, mouth. I, I, <laughs> I think the Model X is a hideous looking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Compared to, compared to the uh, I Pace, you know, it, we're talking a sports car, and it's got it'll basically have the suspension components of F Pace. So you're going to talk about the performance-wise, it's going to handle well, it's going to yeah. go well. It's going to go quick, um, and the interior space is remarkable. I know it's only a five-seater, whereas the Model X uh, is a seven-seater. So, but you expect a family of I-Paces. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Look, but still, the battery technology has been. I mean, Tesla's got a gigantic gigabit. That, that's my question. Like, how do you factory. all of a sudden advance battery I know. technology? You and would think that if one can do it. But their quote of 500 kilometers. Also, I doubt that will be the base model. I reckon mm. they're going to do a Tesla-style bring it up yeah because um, yep. that's where the real cost of the the car is and that's be. where you make money as well yeah yeah but anyway for my hit i have said for my miss i should say yeah, um go. yeah look i i think uh, and i know this has been out for a little while but i really don't like that arcadia oh, I was say, please don't say the arcadia that's mine <laughs> <laughs> my miss. the arcadia is just it's just it looks like a sorrento from the rear and from the front, it looks like a tarted up Captiva. It's right, just so we know that this car is coming to Australia. The Arcadia is, is coming to Australia. So you're saying that, that perhaps it won't work so well in Australia? No, I think it'll probably work well because they'll price it relatively cheap yep. and people will just buy it because it's a big yep. seven seater yep. and it looks American. But I mean, at what point can you not evolve the design? Like it yep. just looks like a typical American SUV. Like, yep. come on guys, like get, just have some styling. Can I, yep. I agree, it's got, it's got a weird, uh, really large rear overhang 
but it's got a really short well, front overhang, not noticed. quite into proportion. Yeah, we have noticed from side on, it's unlike any car because uh, the, the, I've got a mic mate, I don't need one. Because the, the front has that short overhang and then the rear is, it's like another car yeah. behind there. But I'll tell you what, I had a good look inside the Arcadia and it's got a fantastic rear seat okay. folding mechanism which folds dead flat which opens up to a, a cavernous uh, and that's area be of load space. For Holden. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, they, they I, I just know the look of it. It's got a narrow track as well. Yeah. Um, so what's yours? Okay, so for me, the hit is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. Um, now, is, is that because Alfa's paying your ticket? <laughs> 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 so because uh, the car is, it looks incredible. Like 2.9 litre twin turbocharged V6, zero to 60 miles an hour. So that's just under 100 k's an hour. Yeah. 3.9 seconds. Same as the uh, Giulia Quattroverde. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He just wanted um, to say that word. I love it. <laughs> this is a quadr uh, Quattrofuglio, yeah. uh, the, the Stelvio. Quadr so yeah. um, basically this car will set the world on fire. It has an incredible top speed. You can get optional carbon ceramic brakes. And based on the discussion we had yeah, with... huge. Yeah, based on the discussion we had with various uh, engineers from Alpha, that stuff can now be ported onto other FCA products. So we could find in the future that you'll you'll get a Jeep or something that has giant carbon ceramic brakes on it, or at least as an option. Are, are, they, are they screwed on properly well, or will they fall off on yeah, the Jeep? At least one of the brakes will work. Um, <laughs> so you've got carbon fibre bits, you can get Sparco race seats. Like this is, this is a proper, proper car. Yeah. In terms of my miss, I'm going to say everything at the Dodge stand, uh, the Charger and the Challenger, and it's not, not for the reason you may think, they have a car with 700 horsepower, over 500 kilowatts, the, the Charger Hellcat. That needs to come to Australia. I've Left, driven, I've I driven know, that. I know. And it sounds and looks incredible. It's insane. Some it's of fantastic. the colours they have at that stand are amazing. Yeah. Yet none of these cars are available in right-hand drive. No. And they keep saying that yeah. they want to bring them. And can I also um, uh, shout out to Cadillac? Mm. They've got some really amazing performance sedans oh, yeah. over there. The CTS-V has a 6.2 litre a supercharged V8, which will do 0 to 60 mph in 3.6, 3.7, I'm sorry. So about and that's three point, wheel drive. yeah, rear wheel drive. The ATS V uh, is a 3.8 second car for 0 to 60. So that's quick as well, They're using a three litre twin turbo. Now here's the thing, that ATS V, that engine should have been in the new Commodore. Yeah, why not? Can you imagine? How fast this new, new Commodore. <laughs> no, but this is the thing. It's it's a General Motors shared engine. Yeah. Why can yeah. you not get that twin turbo six, cram it under the engine instead yeah. of using a naturally aspirated six? Again, why not right hand drive? I mean, Cadillac nearly made it to Australia back oh. in 2008 before the GFC literally cars. tore up that tore up the invitations that had been <laughs> sent out. There was a website. Yeah. They had everything ready. So please, and then, poof. please bring bring Cadillac back to Australia. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't it, make sense. Yeah, look look at how it. Infinity and look at how Genesis but are going. Cadillac looks good. Like it is, it is a stunning yeah, looking. They're modern. Well, who, who's going to buy them? Who, who is oh, buying? I, I mean, is it going to be? It's going to be Statesman well, and Fairlane buyers. Paul mentioned the um, uh, the CT6, the new yep. platform, lightweight yep. architecture, long wheelbase. Yep. Um, that uses that. You can be had with a two liter turbo. Yep. A uh, naturally aspirated 3.6 and that twin turbo three litre. So there's well. some really nice options in that car and it only weighs 1680 kilos. It's a really long car, very comfortable. I think, I think you guys are daydreaming, mm -hmm. but anyway. anyway. Um, so that has been the 2016 Los Angeles Motor Show with, with the three of us. Uh, hopefully the coverage has been to your satisfaction. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. But in the interim, head to caradvice.com to see all the latest news and information from the Los Angeles Motor Show. See you back in Australia.